What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. Today we're going to be talking about defining every column in your table as a Varchar 8000 and why that's a bad idea. See, when I was first starting out with SQL Server and I learned that the Varchar data type only uses up as much storage space as the actual value that you're inserting into that Varchar column, plus a two byte overhead, I thought, wow, this is such a great data type. It's so flexible, I'm just gonna create all the columns on my table as Varchar 8000 because then I'll never have any problems fitting any data that I want to those columns. And while my logic about Varchar not wasting storage space was accurate, I had also recently found out about char and how it pads white space to fill up the entire defined data length. All my other assumptions about just creating columns as Varchar 8000 were really bad. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over four reasons of why this is a bad idea. And I rank these reasons from kind of the least to most critical, so be sure to stick around till the end to see what those ones are. And so the first reason why you don't wanna define all the columns in your table as Varchar 8000 is because of documentation. And I'm not talking about any formal documentation, I'm talking about the informal documentation that correctly defined data types and lengths tell you about your data. So let me show you an example of what I mean. Imagine we have a column called zip code that's defined as varchar 10. Without even having to look at the data in this column, we already know some information about it, or at least we can make some pretty good assumptions about it. So for starters, US zip codes or postal codes are typically five digits long, but there's this additional extra four digit extended zip code property. Since this field is defined as varchar 10, I can first make an assumption that, at least for some of the values in this field, it's probably using that full five plus four you know, digit zip code with maybe a hyphen in between them, which is why that data type was defined as varchar 10. But because I chose varchar instead of char, uh, I know that maybe this data is variable, right? Maybe some of the records in this column are the full nine digits plus a hyphen uh, zip code value, while other records maybe are only the five digit zip codes, right? Maybe our data source is messy and we're getting this kind of mixed data in this one column. And so even though I can't be 100% confident uh, of what the data looks like without actually looking at it and profiling it, just having this well-defined varchar 10 data type tells me a lot about the data, and that's what I mean about documentation. If you just make all your columns varchar 8000 or something that's you know, way out of proportion to what the data actually represents, it doesn't really tell you anything about that data. It's gonna be a lot more work for you to go in there and figure out what different fields really represent. All right, so the second reason you don't wanna have every column be varchar 8000 is for validation. Now, while hopefully your application has good client-side validation and even back-end server-side validation from the app's perspective, it doesn't hurt to have an extra layer of validation in the database as well. So imagine our zip code field in our application is right next to the delivery instructions field, which is a large uh, you know, text area where someone can leave a comment saying, hey, leave my package on the back porch next to the large pineapple bush. It's entirely possible to assume that at some point, a user is going to mistake which field their cursor's in and type that long delivery instruction uh, message into the zip code field, into the wrong field. And so if all of our client-side validation fails and our table column is, of zip code is defined as varchar 8000, those delivery instructions are gonna successfully insert into our zip code field. And so that's really bad because no one really wants to deal with such dirty data in their database. If instead we had our zip code field you know, limited to 10, we could potentially alleviate some of those, those problems because maybe our insert would fail and we would avoid having that dirty data enter our database. So reason number three of why you don't wanna create every column as a varchar 8000 in your table is because of indexing. Have you ever tried to index a column that's more than 1700 bytes or 900 bytes, depending on which version of SQL Server you're using? If you have, then you're probably familiar with this warning message saying you can't create an index key of more than 1700 bytes. And while SQL Server will technically still allow you to create that index, as soon as you try to insert some data into that varchar 8000 field that is longer than 1700 bytes in size, that insert will fail, you'll get an ugly error message from SQL Server, and now you have a whole bunch of new errors and problems to deal with in your database. All right, and so for the final reason why you don't wanna just make every column varchar 8000 in your table in SQL Server is because of bad estimates. 
So for this example, imagine we're gonna create a table, let's get an ID integer column, and it has another column called big column, right, which is varchar 8,000. If we go ahead and insert a thousand rows of data where every single row is just a single character, in this case, A, what do you think SQL Server will estimate for the row size of all these rows? And so you might be thinking SQL Server, right, knows my data, it can look at it, it's gonna estimate that this data is only three bytes long, right? One byte for my, my actual value of A plus the two byte overhead. Each row of data should be three bytes. Well, not exactly, see, because that's not how SQL Server estimates row size. For varchar data types, SQL Server actually estimates the row size as being half the size of the defined length of our column. So if our column has a length of 8,000, SQL Server is gonna estimate that the row size is half that. So instead of estimating each row as only being three bytes in size, SQL Server is estimating that each and every single row in this table is 4,000 kilobytes. And so why does this matter? Well, so in this query where we're just doing an order buy on our big column data, if we actually go look at the memory grant that SQL Server asked for, you'll see that it's over six megabytes. This table of data is only about three kilobytes in size and SQL Server is asking for 2,000 times as much, six megabytes to actually be able to just sort that data. And the reason that happens is because SQL Server doesn't know the actual size of the data when it's estimating it. It's estimating it as being 4,000 bytes per row. It's just, it's very inefficient. And in this example, we're just talking about bytes and kilobytes and single digit megabytes for the size of the memory grants that SQL Server is giving our queries, but if you expand this out to tables that have millions of records with gigs and gigs or even terabytes of data, these overblown memory grant estimates get blown out of proportion very quickly. And so that's it, right? This list, I didn't mean to make it comprehensive. I just wanted it to kind of showcase why it's a bad idea to define every single column as something like varchar 8000. And so I appreciate you sticking around to the end of this video. If you liked this video, please be sure to subscribe. If you're not a subscriber already, just press the button down below. That way you won't miss any of my videos so you can continue improving on your SQL knowledge every single week. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.